Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup where we cover a bit of news from the last 24 hours. Uh, recap the LCS playoffs from last night, the LPL and LCK playoffs from this morning, and then preview tomorrow's schedule in the LCK and LPL. News. TSM. A um, couple things. They're supposedly going to sell their slot. There's rumors that TSM are going to try and... Um, I don't know, shrink their operations, if you will, uh, back off, drop some of the teams. The Valo slot might be open in other games as well. And the LCS slot comes open, or at least there are rumors that it, that it could come open. Um, personally, I mean, a lot of people are going to say, I think this team's going to get it. I think this team's going to get it. Um, I'm not going to speculate on who I think is going to get it, but who I want to get it would be Optic, only because I am an Optic fan. And that Optic is literally the only esports organization that I am a fan of. Um, I've been an Optic fan since, well, 2007, maybe? Maybe? 2008, around there. Um, the only org that I have any sort of memorabilia of, I have a jersey. I have actually their book um, on how it was created. So, um, personally... I would love Optic to get it. It would make these videos a little on uh, a little biased. Right now, I don't. People say you can't. It's impossible to not have bias. I'll say, I'm not a fan of any of these orgs, um, because Optic is the only fan I am an org of. Um, so, you know, obviously people are gonna bring up Mr. Beast. Uh, we saw NRG brought up. I think even Misfits could be in that conversation, um, and quite a few other orgs. So um, that's a thing. But TSM allowed Solo to leave. He announced on Twitter that they were parting ways. He put up, um, you know, facilitator numbers. That is what Solo is. He is a tank player. He is not a carry in the top lane. 2-2 two, two KDA, 7-6 CS per minute, 57-7 KP, 435 damage per minute, 19.6 damage share. That's like carry jungler level damage share, which is not great. You see top laners with... 22 to 24%. 20.7 gold share. Uh, on average was down 180 gold, 4 CS, 150 XP at 15 minutes. One solo kill in 16 games, played 7 champions. Like I said, he plays tanks. So I'm not surprised that these are his stats. That is where he won dimensional. His backup was Hanser. Hanser, another older player in the top lane that played for TSM Challengers um, and dominated the academy system. That gave him an opportunity for a couple games with TSM's main squad. He put up a 3.8 KDA, 8.7 CS per minute, 55.2 KP, um, 557 damage per minute, 24.3 damage share. Like that's at the other extreme of where we see damage share. Seldom do you see a secondary or even a higher third tier carry number for top laners. 23.3 gold share. That is secondary gold numbers. Um, on average, 640 gold up, 14 CS, 470 XP at 15 minutes, 21 solo kills in 36 games played, or 39 games played, 10 champions. Um, I mean, what do I think of this move? I mean, solo could have went to the Oregon, at, I mean, I don't know. TSM are probably cutting bait because they're about to sell. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, Hanser probably deserves to be in the LCS. These numbers definitely scream that, but it is what it is. As far as my predictions, I'm 295 and 139 on the year. I went 3 and 1 on this board here. EG and Golden Guardians, EG 23rd, GG 24th. Um, Golden Guardians would win 3-0. Gory was my MVP. Personally, I had GG winning this 3-2. Um, definitely looking back at it now after a day after the series started, um, Gut Instinct had Gory MVP, but maybe... That licorice claim does make more sense. Uh, you know, a lot of people are making it. Uh, I think River also has a claim. Stick say 16, 1, and 13 in the 80 carry roll, 33% of damage. River 6028, which is, I mean, that's pretty damn good, right? Jojo Pune had the most damage for EG going 3, 10, 3, 29%. So EG had nothing going for themselves. Uh, they had a bad bad read on the draft. They went with Jinx bot lane. And even w listening to the co-stream with Doublelift, Medio, Sneaky, and a Afromu, you hear Doublelift even talk about it because he is, the. I mean, 100 Thieves were the team playing a ton of Jinx, right? And even he's like, eh, eh, I don't know about this. Like, FBI's Jinx, not really it. 
And um, the thing is, like, they just, they had nothing. JoJo playing awful. Uh, Gory doing a fabulous job in mid lane in the first game. And then in the last two games, he played Kaysante mid and kind of just did whatever he had to do. Playing the tank role, which instead of Licorice, in a way, and Licorice was playing more carry-oriented champions. We saw Fiora. We saw Rumble, which I did not expect out of Licorice, into some days Malphite, punishing the Malphite blind pick. Even Licorice said it himself after the series that that was a mistake by someday. Not expecting that um, Licorice could play Rumble. And, um, you know, River had an, a little misplay in game three going to top lane, and, and someday did a really good um, flash to avoid um, dying under his secondary turret. But otherwise, I thought River played a fabulous series, really setting the pace, getting ahead of um, Inspired. Inspired trying his damnedest in Game 3 on a Viego, trying to carry, even built to carry, and couldn't get it done. Um, I've been saying all along that Inspired needed to be given carries if they wanted a chance, but by Game 3, it was already too late. The team was so far behind. Um, honestly, Tilt probably was setting in like this team had nothing for GG yesterday. And I am kind of shocked by how lopsided it was. Like I said, I thought it would go five games, and it being a 3-0 was a surprise. Um, Stick saying who he obviously doing great. Stick say 16-1-13. He did work. Um, you know, just kind of cleaning up for what his team had built up, in my opinion. LCK this morning, Gen G and T1. I had owner my as my MVP. T1 would win 3-1. Guma, 29-6-24, 34% of damage. The bot lane doing work in this one. Owner, 10, 7, and 46, 56 out of 66 KP. Um, I thought his three Sejuani games were exceptional. Um, I thought he was ahead of Peanut, really reading the rift. And, and I mean, counter ganking, ganking in general, being in the right place at the right time in the early to mid game to keep T1 ahead and to build the leads that then... Faker and Guma would take advantage of, and Zeus in game one for that matter. So, in my opinion, Owner played the integral part to get the lead in the first place. Chovy, 14 7, 13, 32% of damage for Gen G. His LeBlanc looking very good when he played it, but the, the struggle is that they could not, they just they just couldn't get it done. Zeus got the better of Doran big time in this one. Doran pulling out the J4 in game four, it did not work. Um, you know, even. Even in mid lane, like I said, Chovy did did work on the LeBlanc, but Faker seemed to keep up and then found a way to deal more damage, right, and have more impact. Um, bot lane, Pays in the win for Gen G. I thought Pays and Peanut did very well. Pays on the Zaya. Honestly, I thought, you know, a couple, I think he played, may play it three out of four games. He played Zaya. I know, I think games. Did they lose game, did T1 lose game three or game two? Regardless, the game Gen G1, I thought Pays did, like, Pays Zaya was integral to their success. Uh, Peanuts, Wukong, really on point. And then in another game where Pays played Zaya, I thought he actually did quite well in the loss. There were moments where I thought Caria got picked off, um, getting a little careless in the jungle and in lane. But otherwise, um... You know, T1, really smooth sailing. I said it in the Discord this morning. Um, with my power rankings, I use an algorithm, right, for my minor region teams and for the major region teams just to figure out how the puzzle goes together. And there's two parts. There's domestic success and then how that translates to how I have it in the international hierarchy. So if I take that second part out and I just look at domestic dominance, only DFM in Japan are more dominant domestically than T1. Um, DFM is in control of 80% of their games so far this year um, out of 14 series, and T1, 75% of, of um, their games, they are ahead. Um, so, I mean, sorry, 75% of the minutes of games played there had in DFM 80% of the minutes, which is really kind of incredible if you think about it, because the LCK is the top region in the world. So for T1 to dominate in the way they are, unlike everybody else, everywhere else, like nobody else outside of DFM are crushing their own region domestically like T1 has over the entire in, entire split. Um, I will say, actually I should specify, the LPL I cannot include 
because their stats I don't have to, to put in there. I don't. I only have some. I don't have all. Um, JDG does crush the LPL in in a lot of the um, stats that I look at. You look at gold objectives, etc. Of course, their record matches EDG and LNG, but in terms of the uh, analytics, when you deep go deep down into why you know the games go the way they are. JDG actually really have quite a, a diffy over the rest of the LPL, but T1 is is crushing it. Um, I thought Zeus played it. like honestly, uh, Zeus showed up in a big way, which I feel like at times this split he's kind of um, taking a backseat because T1 has done very well. Faker has really facilitated and made things happen. I think Owner has really improved. Um, like I said, the Sejuani in this series, he played three out of four games, I thought was incredible. Um, he played the Viego in their loss and still looked very good. So, um, owner was was my MVP. LPL, RNG and BLG. RNG 19th, BLG 11th. Um, I thought RNG would win this one, 3-2. to two. It did not come to fruition. Um, BLG 3-1 and one on was my MVP. Um, Elk, 14-9, 24, 30% of damage. Yagao, 15-4-25 in mid. Gala, 12-11-12. 28% of damage for RNG. Game one, RNG came out firing. Uh, Angel, this was the only good game he played all series. Um, I thought that uh, that um, Gala was integral to their success. Gala and Ming really doing a lot of work in the bot lane. Um, however, that's not to say BLG did not do work. Bin played, honestly, Bin's best game might have been in the loss in game one. On the Gwen, he had multiple double kills. Really controlled fights. I mean, probably lead and damage in all honesty if I looked at the, the chart. Um, just truly, you know, a, a dog fight in game one. And then RNG pull it out. But then the next three games, Angel really struggled. Game one, there was a level one um, that ended up being traded one for one, if I recall. But then after that, Angel just kind of takes takes a step back. I thought that Bin got the better of Breathe, but Bin also was on an island for a lot of it. I think, I don't remember if it was game two or game three that BLG, um, when BLG won, that Bin really didn't have any KP whatsoever, and the team was starting to build an advantage. And some people will say, yeah, well, he's drawing pressure elsewhere, and um, this and that. And it's like, okay, well, sure. Um, however, Yagao was getting multiple turrets in that one. So was Bin really drawing that or was Yagao drawing that? But nevertheless, um, I thought that Bin got the better of Breathe. Even in game four, Breathe would pull out the J4 and, and struggle. I think the J4 pick in top lane is a bit weird. I don't think in the playoffs it's really time to do it, especially in a must-win game. Both of these teams pulling out the J4 in game four when their back is against the wall. I don't think it's, it's time to do that. Um... I guess Gen G have loser bracket, but RNG do not. So for them to do it was was kind of into my opinion. Um, Shun in game four was super great. I mean, super, super good on the um, Lee Sin. Able to really, I mean, like, he was on point. He was on point. He was, I mean, his skill shots were, were, I mean, I'm just seeing some in my head, and it's just like, he played very well. He played very well, and uh, Wade had it in the early part of the series, but then Sean responded and, and did work. And in the mid lane, like I said, Angel didn't show up. Yagao started to really impact the game on the Vigar. Um, and then in bot lane, Elk and On, and people are going to say, why is On MVP? Well, in game two, On, I thought, on his Rakan was super, super good. Um, I thought he was in every play he was initiating he was doing some really really nice things and then on the annie he also was doing some really big things when the game was still close in the early game in game three and um once the game started to get lopsided in blg's favor that's when yagao started getting kills that's when elk started getting kills and we're going to look at the kda and kind of think oh well this is person's you know mvp and i mean there's a case to be made but I really think that the person that got them that lead was on. I thought that he was the reason why they're getting that lead. And then in game four on the Leona, he wasn't as important, but I did think that he um, found his moments to have impact where I thought Yagao and Elk maybe in the other games. I mean, there were times where they were, but I couldn't see, you know, across the, the, the four games, I thought that on was 
the most consistent of of the three um after game two i would have said ben but you know ben kind of falls off you know like i said without the kp and things like that and then it's like okay well he did really well in their loss he one of the wins he hasn't really shown up all that much so uh in the end i didn't pick ben or shun it was it was going to be between on elk or um yagao Sneak peek for tomorrow, LCK, HLE, KT, HLE 13th, KT 4th in the power rankings, HLE 10 and 8, KT 13 and 5. HLE lost to Gen G 3-1, KT lost to T1 3-2. Last time they played was week 8, KT would win 2-1, KT are 4-1 and one against HLE this split. Cuz was MVP on the Discord in that one, going 11-3-20 with 18% of damage. Excuse me, when you combine the two series... He went 15, 3, and 34 for 19% of damage. Clid in the loss would go 3, 10, and 12, 13%. And over the five games would go 4, 15, and 13 with 14%. So a little bit of a jungle diff there. In the LPL, top and OMG, top 12th at 9 and 7, OMG 9th at 10 and 6. Um, top coming off of a win against Team Wee, OMG coming off of a win against BLG to end their spring split. In the final week of the season, these two teams played, so they only played like last week. OMG would win 2-1. to one. Uh, Aki was the MVP, if I recall correctly. He had some really nice steals last week against Tian and kind of started sparking this thing in my head where is Tian missing some smites and then against we he did miss a couple as well so I don't know what Tian's got going on when it comes to comes to smiting Aki 5 10 18 11 percent of damage Tian 4 10 30 14 percent so top esports across the three games getting a lot more kills than OMG but not coming out ahead um when looking at these two series um this one, I think, is, is less predictable than that one in that top. Now we're playing Wayward instead of um, Ching Tien and top lane. We'll see if that ends up continuing tomorrow against Shanji. Um, that's, an, that's a new wrinkle to the whole deal. And plus, OMG were able to win against top due to some steals and things like that. And how consistent can you expect that to be? Um, so that's a thing. As far as HLEKT is concerned, I think that that one's going to be a tight one. I think the bot lanes are going to be real interesting. You got Viper Life versus Aiming Lahens. Um, you know, I think that um, the junglers, like Cuz and Clid, like Cuz ended up being a, a top upper half jungler when it was all said and done. But the jungle role really left a lot to be desired in the LCK. So the gap isn't as massive as maybe this these stats would indicate. So... We'll see what happens. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a supporter, and thank you for watching.